Then I've got my bag, I've got my song giving this, so I'll never get rid of it. My tight list 909, 19 degree, H, love that. Irons, Wilson, FG Tours, forged. And my favorite club ever, the one. The putter's a white hot putter, but that's fine as well, don't mind that. Well, thank you. Guys, how are you doing? Do me a favour, let's scroll down to the comment section and go, Simon, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'll be like, mate, I'm doing really well. So quickly, before we get into this video, I've got a great idea for 30,000 subscriber milestone. Obviously, it's a big milestone for me, um, and I didn't think I was going to get anywhere near 30,000 whilst we're in lockdown, because obviously, I'm just in my flat. However, how the channel's going, this video series going, it's just fantastic and just unreal. Um, I want to keep it going, and the idea that I have is build a bag for someone, 500 pounds, and then give it away to them. So me and that person go on eBay, FaceTime, Zoom, so if you win this contest, you're gonna have to have some kind of electronic device yet, you're watching my YouTube video, so I imagine you already have that. Um, uh, and we build a bag together, everyone watches it on the channel, probably about half an hour, 40 minutes long, um, just irons, wedge, pack. it's gotta be the whole bag. I don't know how you're gonna enter, I don't know how the logistics of it, what country you're in, obviously the clubs that we buy on eBay go be shipped to you. The only problem is, 500 pounds is the potential the number that I need. Now, I can't necessarily afford that at the moment, so I'm putting some feelers out to some companies um, and see if they're interested in sponsoring that video and the videos leading up to it. Um, however, if you're in a position that have a company that relates to some kind of golf or clothing or men's stuff or whatever and you're interesting and we think it might fit in terms of sponsoring that video, then hook me up ssgolfacademy at gmail.com or my Instagram. I think it's new, I think it's fresh, I don't think anyone's ever done this before and also it'd be a nice way to like finish off potential lockdown series, hopefully I hit 30,000 before lockdown um, finishes um, and I think it'd be a cool way to obviously culminate everything that we've done, put in, uh, you guys have learned, I've enjoyed making because trust me, um, uh, this is keeping me sane through this time um, and yeah, I think it's just generally a good idea, any ideas leave them down below guys um, and let's just get straight into the video. Okay, so starting out this video with Mark Butler's bag, I love this bag, so it's $321 Canadian, £184 um, for this whole bag and I think it's a great bag it's got some great clubs in there Ping Raptor Driver I love Odyssey 2 Ball um, uh, which you've got $14 which is just a like, stupid bargain 3 wedges for $70 the bag um, uh, which is um, uh, quite an interesting taste um, uh, but I love it and some steelhead irons basically he's built a great bag he's um, 50 years of age Plays about 18 ish handicap. He's annoyed if he doesn't shoot um, under 90 basically. And he can't wait to obviously get back out and get playing. Um, he did buy a set of F8s, but now he's annoyed. And this was new, by the way. He's annoyed because um, uh, now he just wants to sell them and just feed his second hand um, bargain hunt, which I um, uh, fully know the feeling of. So let's have a quick look at his bag. Start on a budget. Now, Ping Odyssey. Let's go into it. Ping Odyssey, any two ball. I don't care who you are. Um, if you have just started the game and you want a forgiving, let's see if we can get a nice, decent pitch on this. If you're just starting the game and you want a decent, forgiving, high MOI, like the Spider or like the um, Stroke Lab Putters or whatever, and you only want to spend £30 or £40, this is the one to do it with. Odyssey, two ball, old school. They, the reason that everyone had them 12, 10 years ago, or whatever it was. Great putter, great feeling, does the majority of what you want, go and buy one, I highly recommend it. If that's, if you want a forgiving putter and you don't want to spend a hundred pounds. Got some SM wedges, not SM. So it's got some Vokies at the bottom there. Now, if they've got a red saw on them, like there for example, unfortunately they're not conforming anymore. So you can't use, they've got box screws, they won't have V grooves, unfortunately you can't use those in competition anymore. Um, uh, so if you were to play in um, get a handicap or etc, club competition, you can't use those wedges anymore. They need to be V grooves. Basically um, the RNA deemed them illegal back in 2010. I think amateurs were still able to use them for about five, six years afterwards though. Um, uh, I can't quite remember. I'm sure one of you would tell me. But anyway, for anyone that's just playing the game, it really doesn't matter. So if you're not playing competitive golf, does not matter. 
buy whatever wedge you want. Got some old school steel head Callaway irons here. Again, forgiving, um, cast iron, he picked those up for next to nothing. I love that by the way. Let's give a quick pause on that old T-Zoid. Um, uh, so forgiving irons, offset, you next to nothing. As I said, Mark's done a great job of building a bag pretty much next to nothing um, and it very much suits where he is in his game at the moment and I love that. Potentially he's probably going to need smaller heads and forward irons and uh, less offset the more he practices and plays. But for the meantime, I love it. Now this T-Zoid, I love an old school driving iron. 21 degrees. Now I'd love to know how it feels and sounds, um, but I bet that still goes. Like at the end of the day, I say this about driving irons all the time, you're pretty much going to get it to go as far as a normal um, everyday um, driving iron nowadays. The only thing is, I would say, is that the feelings got a lot better. So off center hits are gonna be a lot more forgiving. Shafts have got 10 times better. So in terms of that, that is gonna be a big difference. For a player that normally uses a driving iron, probably you wanna invest a bit into it. Like me, for example, I can only find a fair way for the driving iron um, if I need to, that is. Um, but I think if you call that out the middle, Ball doesn't know what's getting hit by. So if you get a decent ball speed, decent launch, decent spin, it's gonna go a long way. So I love that purchase. I love the old school T-Zoid um, Fly High. Highly recommend people go and have a look at that if you want a cheap alternative. It's got a nice little, is this F6 I think? F6 um, hybrid or F7. Apologies for my lack of Cobra knowledge. And then he's got a ping up Rapture Driver at the back there. Let's pause on that beauty. I think that is the original as well. So I think that's Carbon Crown if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, composite. So that there, which he put, bought for, I think you said $40, didn't you, Mark? One of the most expensive drivers to ever come out of its generation. I did a video on it, $500. It was first Carbon Crown, only Carbon Crown Ping ever bought out. So you know everything's got car Carbon Composite Crowns now. Ping of always, um, uh, it's the only driver that had a Carbon Crown in it. So um, one of the most expensive drivers to ever be made and now you can get it for $40, $50, which I think is really, really interesting. Um, and he's built this whole bag for £184 um, uh, in the UK, obviously in Canada, um, uh, it's like, um, uh, exchange rate, but I love the bag. I think he's done a tremendous job. I think he's done all the right things. So um, thank you for showing us your bag there, Mark. Um, uh, and obviously people can use that to obviously get some idea what they should be using if they're similar kind of handicap or level in their game, i.e. 18 handicapper, and above. Okay, really interesting bag here. Um, quite old school, pretty much been all donated to him or given to him. This is from Tim M, by the way. Uh, plays three to four times a year, shoes high 80s on average, um, uh, and has a very high fade, quite a steep swing by the looks of things. Um, uh, and to be honest, if you're only playing three, four times a year, and you've only got time for that, you want clubs that are gonna suit that. Now, if you're practicing three, four times a week, that's when I advise that you get um, not offset, you get blades, you get um, hard clubs to use because let's practice, let's grind, etc., etc. If you're only playing three, four times a year with your mates, work, whatever, get some clubs that are just gonna enjoy your day. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't punish yourself. Like, if you've got the time, practice, get better. If you haven't, go and, it's a game. Let's enjoy ourselves, guys. Too many people take this game way too seriously. Um, uh, so, his go-to clubs that he loves is his three and five wood off the deck. Um, and he's thinking, if he was to upgrade anything second hand, what would it be? So, he's got a few clips. Um, uh, it's quite short videos, but it gives us an idea of what's in the bag. So, old, old, old school, which is not a problem. And actually, he's got, he's left-handed, which can prove a problem, by the way. I um, mean, getting some stuff, which a lot of people tell me, only if you want something specifically. If you want something, like for me, for example, I know what would work well from him. Tons of left-handed stuff out there, but you've got to be a bit more open-minded. So, overall, what would I spend money on? So, he loves the three and five wood off the deck. That's his go-to. Now, they're old school. He loves a bit of Cobra, or the person who donated these clubs to him, love a bit of Cobra, but he gets on with them. So am I gonna change those? No. So they work, that's brilliant. Didn't mention the hybrid, and that's probably a bit more up to date. Again, I don't think that's necessarily an issue. And he's got a nice little Odyssey putter there at the bottom, um, uh, which potentially 
could be changed. But again, didn't really mention his putting that much. And he's got a King Cobra, non-adjustable weight um, uh, driver, forgiving, uh, high MOI, high launching, um, uh, which again, isn't necessarily a bad thing. So, what would I change? I'd probably change those irons. Because if you're playing three to four times a year, first of all, you don't need a three iron. Arguably, you don't need a four iron. I'd be very surprised if you use either of those clubs, because I imagine you use your hybrid in replacement. And then let's have a look what else you've got in the bottom of the bag. I think it was this one. Um, uh, so that's the bottom. Uh, and he's got a couple of wedges. I love the MD3. What's that? 52 degree. Perfect. And he's got a sand wedge, which I imagine is going to be 56 potentially. So irons is definitely something that we'd have a look at. Let's have a look on eBay. Let's see what we can get for him. Left handed. Okay, so let's have a look. We're looking for irons specifically. Now, a lot of left handers always say they struggle with finding deals. So let's see if this is true or not. Um, uh, left hand irons, let's see what we got. I mean, that's kind of, and also when I say, if you're looking for something specifically, if you're a left hander, you're gonna struggle because obviously the amount of stock or what's out there is not easy. But if you keep an open mind, it's just as difficult to sell left-handed stuff as it is to buy it. So people will want to get rid of it. They're going to sell it at 30, 40%, whatever a right-handed version would be. Now, Tim, they're a great buy. Cavity, um, cast iron, they're going to be offset. A stiff steel, which is kind of realms. Actually, what is your club head speed? Hang on one second. Um, uh, so it's about 150 with a seven iron, so just normal. Um, oh look, four iron doesn't use that much. Use three iron, used to punch out the woods only. I'm good at this, aren't I? I did say, I did say he won't use his three or four iron that much. So we're looking five to pitch and wedge maximum. And we don't want to spend really more than a hundred pounds. Um, uh, left hand, those Nike Vapor Pros, no, too small, and also way too much out of our budget. A lot of these are good. Left hand Cobra. See, if you want to keep it within the set, those Cobras, they'd be great for you. They'd be unbelievable. That's perfect. Let's see if we can find ones that aren't being sold by a company. So obviously we can get a bit more of a deal. I5s, potentially too bladed. Um, and the only reason I'm going down this route is because if you're going to start practicing more and playing more, by all means get a smaller head. Get something that's forged, um, uh, get a few more irons, potentially get a four iron in the bag. But if you're only playing three, four times a year, don't bother. Just get something that's going to help you out. Play golf, enjoy yourself. You don't need to spend a fortune when you're doing it. Um, uh, now we have gone up quite a big price bracket. Uniflex, near. Nah. Callaway Razor, Uniflex, near. A lot of Uniflex going on here, isn't there? Um, left handed, left handed, left handed. Those left handed Masters irons aren't too bad. But I think you get the idea. I mean, it's all about the budget and um, uh, how much you want to spend. But as long as it's nice, big, chunky, um, uh, and offset, I think that's going to help your game a lot more. Don't bother getting anything higher than a five iron at the moment. Anyway, Tim, I hope that helped. Any questions, obviously leave it down below or email me and I'll get straight back to you. Okay, good email here from Stuart. Common question that a lot of you probably have. Um, uh, now, he's thinking, do I need a hybrid between my um, three wood and four iron? Now, his driver goes 200 yards. He doesn't know how far his three wood goes yet um, uh, because he just bought it before lockdown and his four iron goes 170 yards. Now, what I would want to know realistically from a club fitter point of view is how far do you actually carry your four iron? Do you carry at 165, which I don't think you probably would, um, and it stop at 170? Um, or do you carry at 140 and it runs out to 170? Because that is important because at the moment for a yardage point of view, you don't need another club. Ideally, you'd probably need maybe like a five wood. I'd probably suggest rather than a hybrid because woods launch the ball higher um, and it's gonna give you more of that carry distance um, and get the ball to stop quicker than a hybrid necessarily would. Um, obviously, I think it's more of a case of you need to know your yardage of your three wood. Do you? No, you don't really. You want a club that's going to slot there. I want you to have a club that carries 170. You need a club that carries 170. So, what I'd recommend is either a four hybrid or five wood, I think. For your club head speed, where you are at the moment, I think that would do the job. I'd go reg flex because I'd want to see more height. I'd want to see um, 
more launch, potentially adjustable, so you can launch loft that even higher if you don't quite get the um, distance you want from it. Let's have a quick look at your bag anyway. Now, I've got, <laughs> I'm just going to show you my Facebook Messenger. I really am sorry, guys. I didn't even know you guys were messaging. I don't use Facebook anymore. I've got so many messages on here that I haven't even looked at yet. So I can only apologize to you guys for not even having a look. Instagram's bad enough, and my email's bad enough, let alone now I've realized people are messaging me on Facebook as well. So I can only apologize. So, so you go through his bag. I love these irons, by the way. So you've got given the driver free, brilliant. Um, uh, King F7 uh, three wood again great. I'd probably loft that up more. I don't know what saying you've got it on at the moment, but I'd loft that up more. These irons, great iron. If you're looking for a forgiving starting iron, PNG G15, highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, uh, and then he's got some bokies down the bottom there, and some wedges, and he's got a good gapping 52, 56, and 60. Um, so I love all of that. However, the question is. Um, great putter. Um, uh, where do you, how do you gap yourself between that four iron and um, uh, that wood? Now, if you had 14 clubs in the bag, I'd tell you to take the four iron out of the bag altogether um, and you'd have five pitching wedge and you're now going to have a four hybrid in there because you need the launch um, and potentially that's going to give you more distance and more consistency. In terms of hybrids that we should be now using, um, uh, I think. Thing. Well, you could potentially, now nah, do you want to go Cobra? You could, could do anything to be honest, mate. Let's keep it ping. Ping G20 hybrid. Let's happy Avenue. Um, ping G20, Gente. Mind G, is that, the, is that what a ping G20 hybrid is? No, don't want that then. Ping G25 hybrid. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Did I type in something completely different a minute ago? I must have. This is what we want. Ping G25 hybrid. You're going to get a reg flex and you're going to get a four. If you want a hybrid or a five and you go for the wood. That's what I'd highly, highly recommend. There's loads of them out here um, uh, and I think that's going to gap nicely. As I said, you need something that's going to carry 170. Your three wood's gonna be great off the tee. Your three wood's gonna be great on a downhill long par five. But if you've got a par three that's 165 yards to the front bunker, this is the club that you need. Um, and whether that's, um, and I think loft is gonna help you more than anything. So that's what I'd recommend. That's what I'd put in the bag. It doesn't necessarily have to be ping, but that's my general advice when you're looking um, to obviously make that gap. Okay, the next bag's all the way from Melbourne, Australia, from Sean. Sean, thank you ever so much for obviously sending your bag in. Been playing for four years, currently playing off seven, so he's a decent player. Um, uh, best round's three over par. He plays 80% of his golf on Parkland golf courses. Uh, nothing stands out. Favourite clubs are three iron, all second hand. Um, or he's been bought either straight off the rack or second hand. Um, he's never been club fitted. He said once he got down sing single figures, he would get club fitted, but he never got around to doing it. He is six foot four. Um, uh, so again, tall lad, and he didn't really ask me a question. However, I imagine I should probably advise him whether to get fitted or not. I think that's probably the most advisable. So, his bag. Good wap uh, good wapping, good um, uh, gapping at the bottom end of the bag in terms of weight is 52, 56, 60. Now he's got some great irons. I love these irons. These Wilson Staff FG Tour irons, but in black. I think they're a great choice. I'll see if I can find some of those prices up on eBay of those. They look fantastic. Favorite club here is this X Forged um, Callaway um, utility iron. Great driving iron. It's his favourite club. I'm not surprised. Cobra Bios Biocell three wood, and then a Nike Vapor Pro Fly. Pro Fly. It's the last one Nike made, um, uh, and they've all got multi compound grips on them as well. So he plays off seven, and he's got a Wilson Star putter down the bottom there. Uh, he practices three to four times a week, and um, he plays a lot of competitive golf. Um, uh, so. What would I advise for such a player? Because he's obviously practicing a lot, which is great. And if anyone um, that sent a bag in at the moment potentially wants a club fit that hasn't already had one, it's this gentleman. All I would advise Sean is go for the club fit. But 
just make sure that there's going to be a big enough change between what you've got in the bag at the moment because you've obviously done well you got down to seven and um uh, what they're going to give you okay so dispersion has to be better spin rate has to be better i imagine someone could probably if you just bought that um driver off the rack or second hand your numbers are probably going to be better with your driver but what would i suggest for you to get down to four i'd buy some new wedges and i'd potentially get a perfect if i had to bet money on how you could improve your bag at the moment and get down to four because you practice enough which is great i would get new wedges i'd get them fitted so that you know exactly um uh, what yardage they go at um uh, probably get them either lengthened potentially get a stiffer flex in them uh, potentially make sure they're all gapping perfectly between each other i potentially go for a putter fit as well um, uh, and get something that is built for you so you can use over the next 10 15 years because the irons the three wood and the driver they've got you down to seven and i normally say between like handicap of 20 to 10 it's all about irons um, and driving finding a fairway putting it on the green two putting to get down to the rest of it, it's all wedge playing pattern. And to be honest, your wedge potentially look like they need upgrading. They don't. You don't need newer, fancier wedges. You could get the same RTXs, um, uh, but sharper grooves. And also, I think fitting wedge wedge fitting is important. I think if you're going to get anything now, let's double down on your wedge play. Let's double down on your putting. That's going to get you down to three or four. The rest of the bag, I think, looks great. Um, uh, I don't think if I got you a new driver that's potentially going to get you down to three. If I got you a new three wood, I don't think that's going to get you down to scratch. If I got you new irons, you already practice enough with them at the moment and you probably know your irons inside out. I don't think that's going to help. Wage playing pattern is going to help. So I hope that helps, Sean. I love the bag. Thank you ever so much for sending it in. Um, any questions, obviously comment down below. Okay, Chief Detective Simon Smith on the case. Chris W. All the way again from Australia. Um, uh, and I've gone through this email a couple of times now thinking what can I say how can I help this gentleman um, uh, and it's all kind of slowly come together after I've watched his video now he doesn't ask me a question um, he's got all the gear which is not an issue at all I love his bag I think he's got everything um, however he doesn't need any new clubs he needs to work on his swing sorry Chris <laughs> um, he doesn't get out to play that much um, he currently plays off 14, so he's a handy golfer, there's no question. He swings, he swings his irons to about 85 miles an hour, which means that he probably swings his drive at 100 miles an hour, which means that his ball speeds are probably about 120 to 130, something around there. He carries the drive about 240. He hasn't got any feeling with his pitching wedge and utility wedge, um, uh, and his favourite club is the original one, the tailor-made one. I'm going to show you his bag now. Now, this is why I say he needs to work on his swing, if he's to work on anything. And can I also just say, um, in Chris's defence, he's got a bad back, which I see a lot of um, in terms of um, when you have um, injuries or um, pains or whatever, it affects your golf game. And this is why it's T Detective Simon Smith on the case, because it all adds up. So he's got a great looking bag. He's got the Ping I-500s, he's got the Glide wedges. Um, I love the Ping G30 um, wood in there. I think that's a great purchase for anyone that's looking for forgiving wood. He's got the M5 driver um, and he's got the original one. Now he doesn't get on with his U wedge and his pitching wedge. And I might even, Chris, you're gonna have to let me know in the comment section whether I'm right. I bet you shank that utility wedge and pitching wedge. Um, because you've got a bad back, I'm gonna pause this. Because you've got a bad back, um, uh, because you have quite low carry distances for your higher clubs, but you get on with the original one, I imagine you come over the top, I imagine you're quite steep on it, which doesn't help with your lower wedges in the bag. When you do catch them, I imagine they go left. Um, uh, when they do come on target, they kind of go high and nowhere, which is probably why you like the lower lofted irons in the bag, because obviously they're compressing the ball a tiny bit more, because you don't have to open that club face as much. Um, uh, and overall it's a case of your you don't get to play that much if you were to have lessons you're going to have to take real care and let the guy that teaching you to mind your back because the reason that you probably have no rotation in your swing again to take to simon tell me if i'm wrong is because you're protecting your back 
because you're protecting your back, you're having to use your arms a lot, which means you're using shoulders, which means you're coming over the top, which compounds the error. What I'm trying to say is there's nothing wrong with your bag. Your bag looks great. I love the bag. I'd play with your bag. Um, but if you wanted to get better feeling with your lower clubs in the bag, you're going to have to get slightly more um, uh, shallow on it. You're going to have to get that club working a bit more from the inside um, uh, and working on a better swing path whilst incorporating and not hurting your back. As soon as you engage your lower half of your body, imagine A, you're going to hit a bit more distance, um, uh, B, your clubs have a much better line, your wedges are going to come into play all of a sudden, all of a sudden you're playing off seven or eight. Because realistically, if your yardages, um, uh, you hit the ball so far already, um, you just need to tighten up the lower part of the game. Um, I think all the other clubs you've got in the bag is great. I love the original one driver. Um, that's the first one I've seen in the bag from these vids. It's fantastic. He's got a great collection of head covers as well at the back there. All I'm saying is, all oh, good alignment grips as well. Highly recommend those to a lot of people that are just starting the game. They're quite expensive, but worth the money. Um, uh, and he's got a great selection of head covers there as well. However, if you want to get better, if you want to improve, I'd start working on your wedge play. Um, and I'd start... Um, working on coming from a bit more from the inside. Now, I could be completely wrong. You might go, Simon, I hit a draw. <laughs> and then I'm just like, well, I have no idea, I'll have to see your swing. However, that's my detective skills. I think the bag's perfectly fitted for you. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, uh, but I'd watch that back whilst trying to encourage a bit more rotation in your swing. That potentially will give you more feeling um, and also more distance and launch from the rest of the bag. Okay, last one to finish off with, Alistair Davidson. Very interesting bag and quite common from what I see a lot. Now, the boy can hit it. I've uh, been playing since last summer, currently off 14. Here's my carry distances. Now, he's not happy with his five wood. Second hand, Cobra F9, balloons in the air too much. It's great hitting onto greens, um, but not so good at getting down on long par fives. Which is a very long par five, considering your carry distances. Now, looking at his gapping, his gapping is quite good throughout the bag. 260 for the driver, 230 for the five wood, which is good. 210 for the hybrid, he loves the hybrid. Um, and then good gapping with his irons, everything else. He also, and there's a trend here, five wood balloons too much. Um, he doesn't get on with his nine iron pitching wedge and gap wedge. They go too high. And he doesn't get on with his 60, but then again, no one should be hitting a full 60 ever. Um, uh, unless you're Phil. Um, uh, so, let's have a look at his bag. Bag looks great, by the way. He's got the same driver as I have. Um, uh, he has this F9 five wood, which, by the way, I'm going to say keep 100%. Do not get a three wood. It's not going to help your scoring anywhere near as much as you want it to get a three wood. And to be honest, let's talk about par fives in a minute. He loves the hybrid. I love that hybrid, that 909 hybrid. Highly recommend going and getting it. 30 to 40 pounds, I imagine. Really good. He's got some D300s, which, to be honest, once he starts playing and practicing a bit more, potentially, you could say, is the reason why he's struggling with his nine pitch and wedge at the bottom there. If he hadn't said to me his five wood was ballooning and um, he also struggles with his 60 degree wedge at the bottom end of the bag. So you could potentially say, well, actually, let's get some less. Um, high launching irons, a bit more control. Let's get some AP2s like Titleist in there, for example, to help out that control side down the bottom end of the bag. Um, both gapping is quite good as well. What I would say to you is quite common for a lot of people when they're starting. Now, he also says, should he upgrade his wedges? No, because I'm going to tell you this. You're going to have to start practicing um, punch shots with everything. Okay, so what I want you to do before you go and buy any more clubs, is when you get to the driving range, you're going to have to learn. Let me just put this to the start so you boys can just watch this whilst I talk. Um, uh, I want you to, tr at the moment, your club face and your um, dynamic loft at impacts way too high, i.e. Um, you never take a divot. I presume you never take a divot. Again, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, no one ever tells me I'm wrong. Um, uh, you're not taking any divots. Therefore, when you come to the low end of the bag and you need some kind of compression, it's very difficult for you. So the more loft you get, the more the club just kind of slides up the face, doesn't really compress at all, um, goes high, doesn't really get any spin, um, uh, 
and that is why you're struggling probably with the lower end of the bag. What I want you to do is try and hit really low, get your hands massively ahead of the ball, try and track that ball, try and hit stingers with every club in the bag because it's going to learn you to get that kind of turf reaction. It's going to help with your five wood because I think that five is kind of perfect for where you are at the moment in terms of um, uh, distance because it's a great gapping um, and I feel like the reason that you get on so well with your hybrid is because it's that kind of interim between a wood having enough loft but an iron that you can get steep enough onto it. So that's probably why I say you're doing well with a lot of your clubs. I think you're probably the other side of the spectrum that most golfers are. Most people are really steep. Most people come down on it too much. You're almost the opposite, which is good, by the way. This is not a bad thing, but it's something I work on with a lot of my lessons when they're trying to get good with their wedge play or lower end of the bag. I want them to lose distance because your distance with your wedges are just too far. You have got a pitch in which goes 130 gap wedge that goes 120 so realistically i want you to lose probably about 20 percent on all of your wedges so for example your 52 needs to now go 90 to 85 your 56 needs to now go 70 your gap wedge needs to go probably about 100 your pitching wedge needs to go about 120 now i know that's going to leave like a big gap but i want i want everything to kind of reduce and at the same time, it's going to gap it nicely for the rest of the bag. So even though you're getting more spin on the ball, the high end of the bag, that's going to help because it stays in the air longer. But also, and um, for the lower end of the bag, it's going to give you more control. You don't want this high, long ball with your wedges because it's uncontrollable in wind, at the rough, etc. I want you to have a three-quarter swing. I want you to hit knock down everything with the lower end of the bag. Um, and also, that's going to help with your five wood as well. Because then all of a sudden, hopefully, that's going to give you a more penetrating ball flight. I think the bag looks great. I don't think you need to change anything at this point. I'd keep it as it is. But at the same time, you've only been playing a year. And you haven't even been able to get out this time of year. So you're doing everything right, mate. Just keep practicing. Maybe have a few lessons here and there. Um, uh, but that's what I'd advise. Okay, guys, there you have it. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you wouldn't mind leaving a like, that'd be great. Leave me some comments down below and suggestions how we can make this better. And I'll catch you guys later.